Let's learn how to do some spatial analysis. Most BI visuals rely on attributes to link data together for analysis. While this can be very powerful, it has limitations. For example, summarization relies on common values in the attribute table you see here, values like Northwest and Southeast. Sandy and Ellen can be grouped together to summarize Northwest sales, while Jim and Pat can be grouped to show sales for the Southeast. ArcGIS maps allow you to perform spatial selections to analyze your data in a new way. Analyze your data by where they are or what they're in proximity to. Multi-select allows you to draw a box on the map and select the locations inside the box. The records don't have to have any attributes in common, yet they can be part of the same spatial selection due to their proximity to each other. You can also make spatial selections based on proximity to a location. The red pin on the map is in the Soligent, Alabama area. The purple area, created by our drive time tool, shows how far you can drive in any direction in 15 minutes. The calculated drive time area can be used to make a selection. In this example, Ellen is the only sales rep within 15 minutes of Soligent. Another way to make spatial selections is by using reference layers. Reference layers are hosted by Esri and provide additional geographic information about an area. You can use Esri created demographic reference layers or any other publicly shared layers on our ArcGIS content platform. Reference layers can show common geographic boundaries, such as in this example, where Marion County, Alabama is shown in blue. When used to make a spatial selection, the Marion County area would select Sandy, the one sales rep that lives within the county. So let's jump back over to Power BI and take a look. To start looking at spatial relationships, we will need to get familiar with the spatial selection tools on the map. I'm currently in individual selection mode, meaning I can select one location at a time. If I want to select multiple locations, I need to switch to multi-select mode. Using multi-select mode, I can draw a box on the map to select multiple locations. There's also a third mode, a reference layer select mode, but I don't have a reference layer yet, so we'll come back to that one. In this map, I've added red pins to show where our insurance adjusters are located around the state. I want to take a look to see if their load is being balanced among existing customers. We can do this using the drive time tool, which is inside the edit mode. We can see how much of the state can be covered by our existing adjusters by using the drive times feature. If we create drive times of about an hour, we can see which parts of the state are adequately covered and which ones aren't. So let's create some drive times around those existing adjuster locations. I'll make a selection for my Tampa adjuster, my Port St. Lucie adjuster, and my Miami adjuster. I want to set my distance to about an hour and tell it OK. Things look pretty good on first glance, but let's take a look at the number of customers in each adjuster's area. Now we need to use that third selection mode to use the drive times as selection areas. So let's switch to that now. We can see how many policies each adjuster is expected to cover by using the drive time area as a selection tool. We can see that the Tampa adjuster is responsible for about 92 customers. If we click on the Port St. Lucie drive time area, uh, that's about 72 customers. If we select the Miami adjuster, that's actually 152 addresses. We can see that the Miami adjuster is responsible for a lot more customers than the others, and we don't really want to have things quite so imbalanced. So let's take a look at what we can do about it. We have a number of customers up here in the West Palm Beach area, so let's see what would happen if we would add an adjuster there. So let's go back into edit mode. Let's clear out our drive times. And let's go add a new pin in the West Palm Beach area. Now if we check the drive time areas, we're going to see what happens when we add the new adjuster into West Palm Beach. So let's make our selections here on the east coast of Florida. 
Let's select our West Palm Beach adjuster. Let's select our Miami adjuster. And let's select our Port St. Lucie adjuster. Let's check drive times for 60 minutes. And let's go back to the report so we can see the customer selections. Now, if we check the drive time areas, we see that the adjuster in this West Palm Beach area could be responsible for about 140 customers. If we look at our Miami adjuster again, we see it's about 152 customers. We can see that by adding this new adjuster in West Palm Beach, it could really help balance out some of the load. Using this information could help us put the right people in the right places to help our customers when they need us the most. So let's go back to the PowerPoint and recap. So let's review. We just learned how to use the multi-select tool to filter your BI data. We learned how to add persistent pins for your important locations. You also learned how to use drive time areas to make selections on your report. To learn more, check out the product page in the documentation site to get the very latest information about ArcGIS maps for Power BI. On behalf of everyone at Esri, I'd like to thank you for watching.